it's Robert here, and today I'm going to try something different to what I normally do. Normally, I build these awesome presentations, and they take me hours of hours of prep work, and I go off and I give you this nice sort of experience where everything's polished, and you know, I know exactly what I'm doing. In fact, most of the time, I've printed out all the code that I need, just in case I forget a comment somewhere or something like that. And it really makes for engaging presentation, particularly when you have an hour and you're on stage, you kind of you need to know what you're doing. But it's not how people write code. That stuff gets done on stage is not realistic. What I what is realistic is how we normally write code. I mean, it's lots of searching, it's lots of head scratching, it's lots of changes. And I was kind of inspired by two things. Uh, firstly, the uh, let's play videos you see on YouTube where people play through games, and they talk about how they play through it and talk, and you get an experience of that, and it really shows you the game and shows you all the good parts and all the bad parts. Um, and a lot of the time that's in episodic content, so they'll do, you know, 20, 30 minutes of that, and then put that up as an episode, and then do 20, 30 minutes more, and things like that. So I'm gonna, that was the first inspiration. The second inspiration was uh, a lot of Ruby on Rails things I've been looking at, where they do how to build a blog post, and I think the first person did it in, uh, how to build a blog system, and the first person did it in like 15 minutes, and then somebody did it in 10, and I think there's now a competition to see who can do it in like eight and a half seconds or something. Um, and it's just not real. That's not how you build projects. That's not what you do. Um, you, nobody will use that for a real blog system. It's not finished. It's it's ugly. It's you know it it shows off how some of the cool features of the platform, but it really doesn't. It's not realistic. So I kind of wanted to do something like that, like show off really cool features of a system, but I don't want it to be a lie. Either a, a, a polished a lie that is just polished, like my presentations normally are. Um, or a lie that is just not practical. I really want to do something realistic. And uh, combining all that, I came up with this idea of doing a let's code type thing, where I'm going to talk the whole time, or try to talk the whole time about what I'm doing. Um, and so I want to do a blog because I do like the fact that the Ruby guys do the blog thing, and it really does resonate as a good thing. Everyone knows what a blog is. We don't have to explain the the problem domain. We also don't have to. Uh, it covers lots of things. You know, it's, we've got crud like operations and things like that. Um, so I want to build that and we'll do it in Visual Studio with all the cool Visual Studio and dotting features. And so to start off with, we're going to do this in light switch. Um, and so let's call this the let's code blog. And we'll add that to source control because I have a feeling I might need to roll stuff back. This is going to be rough. I mean, this is not going to be nicely polished. You. This is the type of thing you, you when you want to see how bad something really is that you'll watch this, um, and it will see how good it is. But this is not going to be like, wow, look at this. Here's the five things you should see. I may edit it down to a nice, cleaner one one day. But the the first idea is that we'll have a completely rough thing to start off with. Uh, so I've just created it. Uh, I'm going to add this to. I'm going to do initial commit. Because that's how you have to start every project now with Git. You have an initial commit. Cool. Uh, and if you've never seen Light Switch, you'll be amazed at just how powerful this is. So let's go in here and create some tables. I've I've spent some time thinking about this and exploring it a little bit ahead of time, so I've got some ideas. Hopefully, you know, um, that's not too surprising to anyone. Uh, I don't want an ID. That's not useful. I need a title. It's a string. Two five five. I need an author. It's a string. It requires two five five. I need a body. It's a string, it's required, it has no maximum length. Uh, I need a publish date. So, because I'll, I'll actually, let's start with like, is draft, I guess. I want to know if it is a draft. Uh, so true is a draft, false isn't, so we'll switch to a boolean. And it's not required. Actually, it is required. Boolean is required. You have to have a boolean. Um, and true, it is a draft. False. It isn't. Uh, it's published. Um, that may come back to bite me. It's a bad idea. Yeah, that's fine. Will I like bad ideas? Um, so, by the way, this is just like in Light Switch, we're just creating the table structure, the database. Uh, so I'm just sending these as strings of boolean. And this this here is a choice. This will give. It's still a boolean when I work it in code, but for UI elements, it'll actually give me like drop downs with nice text in it. It just makes your UI much prettier. Um, then I want to say is draft, and I also want to say is 
I want to publish date because I need to do like show the newest blog post on the top. Um, this will be a date time. It's not required. So that's a pretty good uh, first structure. Um, I want to do a bit of code around this as we start off with. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, on inserting. So when I insert stuff into the database, or uncreated. Let's do uncreated to start with. Let's do uncreated for the for this. So every time we create an item, uh, we'll say this dot is draft is equal to true. Okay. Have you? I, I just sneezed. So if the clock ticked over and you see that in the edit, I just cut out a sneezer. Um, because you don't want to hear me sneezing in your ear. Um, then <laughs> maybe maybe you do. Who knows? The internet's filled with weird people. Uh, then every time we insert into the database. I want to say um, if the entity dot is draft, so it's not a draft. So we have published um, and entity dot publish date time has value because see it's optional, so it has the it's a it's not actually a date time, it's a nullable date time. Uh, so it doesn't have a value. Then I can say entity dot publish date time is equal to date time dot Oh, no, I don't want now. Now it's bad. UTC now. Like, store this stuff in, in global things and worry about, like, showing it correctly later. Uh, it's significantly easier down the road. If you do now, it always bites you. It always, always bites you. Never do now. It's just bad. Um, and then I want to go back here. I want to do the same thing for updating. So um, you'll see here, like, we have inserting and updating. Insert it's after um, and inserting. Insert it's after inserting's before. Uh, so updating, you know, here and... Of course, I should have actually just done this as a method. So, private actually be really show off your Visual Studio here. Look at that extract method. Um, set published date as a name. Okay, I'm gonna paste that in there. Hey, look at that! Awesome. Um, so we'll we'll use that. Um, right, next thing we got the HTML client. Uh, so we've created blog posts. Um, let's go create some UI for that. We're going to use the HTML client, which is new in, in version in 2012. Uh, if you have update 2 installed, you'll get the HTML client, which means you can build HTML things. We're going to use browse to see the blog post. So let's go, OK, create me a blog post screen. Uh, browse blog post. That's a horrible name. Let's change that to browse blog posts, which is quite cool. Um, and then I have a list of like blog posts, um, which I don't like. I, actually, I really do like tiles. I know it's a very Microsoft thing to say, but it really does work nicely for this. So I'm going to have uh, the title as large. Uh, the author is, I don't care, it's like it's not important. Body, I don't want to see there. Uh, I do want to see if it's draft, which is fine. And I don't care about published date, which is fine. I think I'm going to change this later on. Um, for now, this is enough simple UI to get stuff done. We also need a way to add stuff here. So I'm going to hit add to the command bar. Add, edit, new, navigate to screen. We don't have a screen here. Uh, this will be the add, edit, blog, post screen because it's not post or any adding singular. And now uh, I just want to change the display name again. Put a slash in there. And if you've never worked at Lightfoot, this this is the designer that they use. It's really actually completely unintuitive the first time you see it. So if you're watching this, like what is going on? But it actually is really intuitive once you get used to it. Um, or if you come from any sort of silver light XAML background, um, the way to think of this is just like collapse everything to start with. It helps when you're learning it. So we have tabs. Inside tabs, we have rows out. So everything once I expand this is a separate row. So that's row one, that will be row two. Inside row two is columns. And there will be two columns, left and right column. And inside each column will be a, a row. And this row will have three items. And the second column, because remember here, will have two items. And what's great is you can change the transfer. I actually do want to change the transfer. Let's go and change this to be row layout. So we're going to change that. Um, and we'll drag title up there. Title first thing we want. Author, we'll drag into there. I don't know what I'm going to do with author yet. Your blog posts need an author, but I don't know what that is. And body, we'll drag into there. And we can hit delete on that, get rid of that. Body should not be a single line. It's a big thing. It's a big text area. And let's drag this to there. I want body at the bottom so it can expand a lot. 
and so I'm going to change this to columns layout. So I have is draft is the first thing, publish date time is the second. Would you ever want to edit the publish date time manually? Like maybe future posting? Hmm. Yeah, let's leave it in like that. I mean, we could change it later. Um, I don't have a spec on this. As you may gather, I'm just like randomly putting this together. Uh, so let's run this. I haven't run this yet. So that should run launches in IE. Uh, we have no items, browse blog posts. We have our button down here, so that's looking good. We can hit this. Uh, it comes up in a little more pop up dialog box, which looks really crappy. I want this bigger. Um, and we've got some stuff here. You can see body is not expanding either, uh, but we can do, you know, first. Let's put me in. Um, draft or published. Uh, what's great with this is if I hit save, it'll complain. I just love all like, that free stuff that likes to choose. Oh, this will be draft. Um, we can leave publish date time as that, and body uh, will just go hello. And it'll hit say, that'll close. Cool, and we can't do anything with the icon tap on that because I haven't set up anything there. So there's some problems. I mean, the, the icon down here is wrong. Uh, it shouldn't be a star, it should be a little plus and things like that. So let's tweak the UI um, and get this UI really sexy. As sexy as I do, I mean, as a developer, of course. Um, so we'll go add blog posts. Let's just do the icon, it's simple enough. Add a, no, I don't want add a picture, I want add. <laughs> no, it's a plus. Simple. Um, next thing I want to do is if you tap on an item, tile list, item tap. Obviously, I mean, I'm not learning this. I've really, you know, know how to use light switch a bit, so we'll, uh, if you tap on that, edit the selected, go to the same edit screen and set that up. Um, Sure, yeah, the, the, you probably want to, this will take time to learn, it took me about a week to learn like, all the little intricacies here and little things that you don't realize you can and can't do. Uh, let's go back here to the add edit page. Uh, you'll see we're currently set on edit dialog over here. Uh, so if I hit F4, let's untick the show's dialog. You'll note, oh, we're edit screen. And what that means is instead of like a pop-up dialog, it's now full screen. Um, and this body I want to expand. So the body height is limited down here in the properties to fixed size. So we'll say stretch to container, which means it grows to the guy who holds it, the, the control that holds it. Um, so in this case, it's the rows layout. If we look at the rows layout, uh, it's set to fit to content. So we actually want to stretch that as well because we want to use the whole screen. And he will now be set to his container. We'll go up to the rows layout. He'll be set to his containers. We'll set that. And now we're on screen. So that was just like completely full. I never actually thought like what's that edit uh, behavior, a screen type. Okay. If you need that, I guess. So that's fine. We should that should tweak the UI just enough that it'd be interesting to talk about or see. So let's try that. Um, and here we go. Add blog post, right icon. We can add it one in here. Yeah, look at that. Um, this is scrunched up here. We should actually. I wonder if we can stretch this out as well, like horizontally. We'll try that. Uh, second post, and it'll be me again. Uh, this time, let's actually publish this so we can get a date time in here. It won't show because there's a weird thing about the client uh, with the HTML client. So watch this. If I hit save, day and time will be set like that. Right, and let's see here. Oh no, it did. I don't know. Maybe I was wrong. Okay, so day and time's right. Never mind. I was going to say something else. I like this day time picker. It's really is quite clever. Um, but it's ugly. Let's just go fix it. And look, we got this kind of height thing going on here. It's a bit of scrolling, but I think that. That scrolling there looks like it's coming from this guy. It's probably not picking the heights right. Uh, let's just fix that. We'll see if we can fix that. Uh, we want the add edit blog post screen, column layout. Okay, with stretch to container. Min, max. No, no maximum. Stretch to container. Minimum. Yeah, uh, no, no minimum. Just use the space you need. Stretch to container and. Uh, yeah, actually, let me put this one for. Well, actually, UI probably. Yeah. Let's just see if that fixes it. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go along. Let's just see if that makes it better. Oh, that does actually. It makes it a lot better. Let's see, we got rid of the scroll bar there. Because now this is not going over too many lines. Yeah, that looks much better. It's like, feels nicely in the center. That was cool. Um, next thing, so that's, we, we kind of done create, update, read. We need delete of blog posts. Uh, the HTML client doesn't have a quick way of doing this. It, it's odd. I've never understood why they just. I know there's some reasoning I'm sure Microsoft has, and it's probably in their visions stuff. It's just, it would be nice to have this. 
Uh, so if you want to do delete, you actually have to go and do it manually. So I'm going to say on, on the blog post there's a button. Um, we'll write a method for this. Delete blog uh, post. Uh, you'll see it's called delete blog post, which is not what I want. To, I want the method called that, but I actually just want it called delete. Um, it'll be on our rows layout. And then it creates a method here. We can right click to edit execute code. Because I'm on an HTML client, I get to write JavaScript, which is always awesome. Um, I really want to do a confirm. What's a JavaScript confirm? It shows JavaScript confirm. Yeah, look at that. Uh, sorry, if confirm, are you sure you want to delete this? Uh, post, question mark. So if you say yes, um, and if you've never seen light switch with JavaScript, it is awesome. So I mean, firstly, Visual Studio is really good with that. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. But light switch actually keeps your JavaScript nice and clean like this. Uh, but it also does this generated thing. And the whole time you're writing code, it's generating JavaScript for you. And because it's generating JavaScript, it can do clever things. So I've got this uh, parameter screen. So I can say, well, screen dot get blog post set because it knows I've got blog posts. Um, and then once I've done that, then function for each post in there, which thing in there, run this function, and I'm going to say post dot delete selected. But I mean, it's quite cool. Like you can see in here, post dot. There's like all kinds of intelligent properties that actually have like state of the item. You know, selected item dot. There's the author, the body. Yeah, I can be really clever on that. Like really, it's just awesome. So I delete the selected item, and then I say uh, my app dot apply changes and I could do all kinds of other you know this is JavaScript promises I mean that's also great with this this is just normal promise stuff that works so I could actually say you know if it failed pop up other stuff um, as I said this is not out of the box and it's kind of something you have to figure out uh, just I really have to say thank you to one guy his name's Michael Washington and he writes the most awesome website for light switch called the light switch uh, help website and he blogs like a an absolute machine, and he has a blog post on this which I was reading earlier because I was thinking about what I wanted to do. And, um, so yeah, if you're ever looking for light switch help, that's a really great place to start. And that's how I figured out like you have to do that, and you have to do that, and that which one I want to do was apply changes and not the commit changes one, which you might think is the right one, but actually it's subtle differences. Why is my app? Oh, that's spelling changes. Oh, uh, Ghost Doc Pro, which is really cool. Um, if you need to do comments and the documentation, yeah, write code here. Okay, now what? All right. Uh, so yeah, okay, okay, okay. All right, not okay. Fine, I'll do it myself. Yeah. Uh, so we should be able to hit start now. So we should be able to delete a blog post now. Uh, first publisher, so we can get rid of that publisher. Yes, please. Ooh, sexy. I like that. That's quite cool. Um, blog posts. I mean, what I really want to do in this today is just do like the back end stuff. So we can, we've got all the CRUD stuff for back end. Um, I want to do comments because I'm going to be able to say like for later, I'm thinking for going further on this, is like I want to do authentication. I want to say like obviously only the blog post author should be able to insert blog posts, but the public should be able to, or just anonymous users should be able to insert comments. So let's have comments. Hey, we got a comments table. Um, and we don't need IDs for comments. Uh, a comment should have a body. It's a string with no maximum length. And then we should have an author name, because uh, which should be a string, 255 is what's required. We should have an author email. And we'll set this to an email. This is still a string. I mean, all that's happening is like intelligence. Once again, the, the same way I used that, that uh, choice field thing on the Boolean, this is just you know, smartness for the UI. Uh, so we'll hit save on that. Do I need anything else on this? Um, oh, well maybe just like a, a created date time. It's also kind of useful. Um, and we'll set this to a date time. And I'm not going to display, I'm not going to require that. I'm also not going to display that by default. Actually, display it by default. I'm going to make it required. I, it's going to be required because what I'm going to do and this is on inserting create um, entity dot create date time is equal to date time dot UTC now 
so that just like every time blockfish comes in, I'll just say it automatically. Um, so there's no way to worry about that as a user. Um, and unless you go to the database, you're going, you, you can't bypass this, no matter how you do it. So even if somebody gets past the front end into the service layer, they can't bypass that piece of code, which is fine. Uh, now I need to set up a relationship. So we'll say uh, one many comments connect to one blog post. Look at that. Oh, wait, uh, relationship, come back here. And I want to delete. If I delete the blog post, delete the comments because I don't need them anymore. There we go. That's cool. Hey, look at that. And you can see we've added a new field here. This shows me the blog post. And if I go to blog post, I have a collection of comments, which is cool. Um, let's just go back to the add edit post screen. And what I want to do in here, let's shrink all that up. Let's add a way to see comments because you might want to admin comments. So comments. Yeah. Comments. This will also be an entire episode, like this whole entire series is just going to be me like not typing correctly. Um, add the comments collection. So you see, I've got this little blue thing here because it's not brought in. So I'll just drag you into there. Haha, <laughs> look at that. And then for each comment, I'll do a row layout. Um, body, I actually don't want body because that'll be massive most of the time. So let's do this. And I'll do some tricks here. So let's do row layout um, for the top thing. And author name, oh, column name, I mean, author name, author email. So we'll see the name and the email next to each other that look pretty cool. Then the body uh, created date. Yeah, we'll put that in there. And I don't need to see the original blog post. Uh, this query, I want the newest comments first, obviously. So we'll edit the query for this. We'll add sort by created date time. Ascending is smallest to biggest, oldest dates are smaller, so I want descending. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many years I've programmed, I still have to check that in my head every time. So if you're doing that, then you're perfectly all right. Body here is wrong. Body here is actually wrong because, I mean, this could be massive. I don't want it to be massive. So let's get rid of body. And I mean, we're not going to have any UI to show this. <laughs> I'm just building all this stuff in the moment. Um, so we'll call this the uh, trimmed body. This will be a string as well. It's not required. Uh, but this is a computed field. Hey, it's got. Thus, he gets the calculator. Um, and so now I can edit the method. And I can say here, um, if we're in the comments of this, dot body dot length is greater than, how much I want to make this? Like 200? What's a good length for this? You know what? Tweets are 140. Like, if you're greater than 140, then return this dot body dot length, uh, dot substring, uh, 0 to 140. And, oh, I, I always make this mistake. Result is equal to the, it's just a weird nuance of like how Lightswitch works. Um, that you don't ever return things, you use by ref variables. Um, and then here I can just say return, because I've done that. Otherwise, because I don't want an else statement, I'm just going to say return, uh, uh, result is equal result is equal to this dot body because it will be less than so that's fine awesome Ooh, let's do let's be great here like that plus ellipse so i know it's been trimmed ha ah, little visual cues for the user so now i should be able to go back here somewhere it's my browse blocker uh, no not browse blocker screen silly me um yeah here and so now what we should be able to do is why am I not seeing it here? Control F5. Build. Clues. Build. How do I get calculated fields in here? I didn't know that. I thought you could. Hmm. Okay, let's put body back in. Alright, hmm. I thought we could have that in there. Fit to content. Really fixed size. Yeah, I'll leave that in the moment. I'll worry about that later. I'm sure we could have calculate. Oh, well, yeah, because the calculate field runs on the server. Yeah, okay, fine. The problem is that that, that that's running on the s in C sharp, not in there. So let's just get rid of all that code because we don't need that. Go back here. We'll get rid of this guy. Might be useful later on. Yeah, I'll figure out how to do that nicely later. 
After you see this, this is becoming really realistic of, uh, I didn't realize that before I started. If this was a presentation, I would cut that out. But it does not do that. Um, actually, so let's just run this and see if everything still runs correctly. Um, yeah, so there's our first post. Uh, we could actually tap on that. Ooh, actually, hold on. Did I have the cat? Do you want to delete this post? No, I don't want to delete it. Keep that. Okay, cool. And then details and comments because it's a separate tab. We have no comments. Awesome. That's a nice sort of first start, I guess, uh, for this. That's going to have to change because it, and this is going to change a bit as well later on. Hmm. Okay, I think that's a good like sort of thing. So we've got backups and stuff. Uh, let's go in here. We'll just add a command So you know, back in log engine. Um, fundamental, fundamental work for back and forward engine. Um, if you ever work in Git, please just do this like one line, simple thing, and then have like details there. So like, added a blog type uh, entity. Um, added a added um, ways to insert. Edit and delete. Uh, edit delete and view blog posts, add a comment entity, added ways to see comments, still needs UI for adding, deleting. I don't think we're going to have editing on comments. So many types of bad comments, they fault. Uh, and we got all that in there. That's fine. Commit. And what I should do is actually put this on GitHub so that you can get hold of it. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. So if you want to grab a copy of this, um, I'll go and commit and check it in there. Um, let's go in here and set this up. Uh, so this would be uh, let's code dash blog. And it will be. Uh, Let's code blog engine built in Visual Studio light switch and a whole lot of JavaScript because I know it's coming as public. Uh, no, we don't want that. Uh, no, we don't want that. Just stop it. Okay, positive. Ha ha ha. Thank you. I will copy that. Let's go back to Visual Studio. By the way, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using TMS for it. This is all the Visual Studio Git extension stuff, which is really, really cool. Um, it's actually really becoming like my favorite way to work with Git. Um, empty the repository. Because you, know, you still need the command prompt. Don't, don't anyone tell you that this is good enough to get rid of the command prompt. If you're doing Git, you go to the command prompt every so often. This is good enough for the day-to-day -day stuff. Like, it just, it's enough. Publish. I hate it when I don't see UI changes. Where's my little blue bar going? Oot, oot, like the front of Knight Rider. Oh, not Ra Knight Rider. Uh, the front of Kit. Cool. Um, you may note that they didn't ask me for my username also there. That's because I've used GitHub before and it's, I've saved it. Hmm. Um, ooh, okay, there's a button I can press. That's why you know that to give me stuff. You know that I give developers buttons because we click them. And I look, it's changed color. I'm sure that's a good thing. Uh, that's quite cool. I think that's a nice first start. Um, I mean, at the point now, we have like a simple UI for and stuff. Um, right, so what I want to do, future things, I need to create UI for showing this. So that's going to be like just JavaScript madness. Um, and then we need to do some way to do comments and we do authentication still. So we'll come to all of that, I think. Yeah. Cool. So that'll bring me to the end of what I want to do today. I think it's a nice sort of size of work. Thanks so much for watching. And I will see you in a future episode. Bye.